I'm going to teach you everything I know about the pen tool. Let's find a clean place to play here. Neaten things up a little bit. Okay, so pen tool is located right here, about the third option down. It's one of those tools that if you hold it down, you'll see there's a bunch of options in here. 90% of the time, all you really need is just the pen tool. And as you'll see later on, these options become available to you using this pen tool if you hold down certain modifier keys and it just kind of contextually knows what you want to do. I recommend whenever you draw with the pen tool to do it without a fill. The reason is, is the fill is always trying to guess your next step and kind of gets in the way in, in cases like this. So just simply turn that off and pick whatever color is appropriate. Just remember you can always fill it later. You can always change the stroke, all that stuff like we've seen in previous videos. So I'm just going to select this and delete it. So the first thing to learn about the pen tool is just the connect the dots kind of method of using it. Uh, you just literally click here, click here. This is what's known as an anchor. This is what's known as an anchor. The thing in between it is a path. And so every anchor that I click, just automatically get a path that fills in between them. And then this is right now is what's known as an open path. And then if I finish up where I started and watch the mouse real carefully what happens here. See that little circle that appeared to the bottom right of the mouse? That's just letting you know that you're back at the beginning and you're about to close it. Once it's closed, you can just fill it simply by flip-flopping the, the, the fill in the stroke. And I would suggest in this video that every time I show you something like this, you just go ahead and pause it. So try everything you can think of going dot to dot. Now some things that you might want to know here is that you can, you can actually pivot a dot as you're making it. So if you were trying to trace something, and you clicked here and you accidentally clicked here before I release the mouse I can hold down the space bar and I can toggle this thing basically move it anywhere I want I'm not stuck to where I first clicked then release the space bar then release the mouse and now that's in place another thing you can do is let's say you want a perfectly straight line and maybe you don't have the smart guides on like right now this is telling me this is going to be perfectly straight um, but you can hold down the shift key when you do that and it'll constrain it by default to a 45 degree angle so either complete 90 degrees or 45 degrees this way so I'll show you that if I cl shift click right now get a perfectly straight line and watch this it doesn't even matter if I'm a little bit off or even quite a bit off shift click gives me a perfectly straight line I'll command Z that and then I'll go over here to what's going to be closer to a 45 degree angle shift click gives me that perfect 45 degree angle so that's nice if you want to create a perfect box but then again why would you when you've got the, the basic shape tools and those smart guards are pretty powerful they do guide you all right so give that a shot and then start the video back up and we'll talk about making curve shapes welcome back Okay, so curve shapes, or, or basically curve paths, result from, instead of just clicking, you click and you drag, and you get these little handles that, that come out. And they, I like to think of them as, as magnetically changing the line that I draw next. So I'm just going to drag it out to here. Now, even if I click without dragging, I will not get a straight line. So I'm going to click right here. And notice that there is an effect on that path that was made. And I can further emphasize or, or maybe help better explain what these do by going over, grabbing the direct selection tool, and just clicking right on the handle. And the further away I pull it from the line, the more of an effect, the more of a magnetic pull it has on it. And I can actually flip it back around and go that way with it. Let me delete that. 
a good thing to try right away when you first learn this little trick is to try to create a perfect circle. And so in that case, what you do is you click and drag. You can hold down the shift key and that'll constrain the handles to right straight across. Pick your next point, click, drag, hold down that shift key. Pick your next point, shift, drag, pick your next point. Use the smart guides to help you get right across from this one. And there's a little oddity right here. If I just click and drag, I sometimes get a little bit weird results where the handles don't exactly go the same size like that. So what I can do instead is when I get back to the beginning, if you option click, it seems to give you just a little bit more control. It leaves the other handle where it was and then lets you just have control only of the, the new handle that you're drawing. So notice no matter how far I drag, the original handle stays in place. So that's really good practice. And then uh, try drawing some other shapes and come back. As you've been experimenting around with this pen tool, you probably figured out that when you click and drag, and this, this time actually I'm just going to click, but on the second one I'm going to click and drag, that you're not only having an effect on the path that you're currently creating, but right here where my mouse is, I'm also having an effect on the next line that I'm about to draw. So if I want something similar to this, that's not really a big issue. I just click here, and if I don't want to, watch what happens if I don't hold down the Option key when I click here. I, I get this other point here that maybe I want, maybe I don't want, but if I hold down the Option key when I do that, Actually, I'm sorry, that, that was no different because I didn't have a point here. So never mind that. I'll, 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 I'll remake that point in a bit. Um, but anyway, so I, I can make something, you know, this is sort of similar to this. But what if I want something more like this? So again, I click, come over here, click and drag. So I'm affecting this, but this is about to affect the new thing that I make. And if I want this shape to be like that, how do I do that? I can't get that without there being some kind of extreme crisscrossing that's going on. So what you need is independence between the two handles. And you get that with the Option key. So I still have my point here. I'm going to click and drag here. Now what I'm going to do is hold down the Option key, and that allows me to break the interaction between this handle and this handle. And now I can go and actually swing that up this way. And then when I go back here to complete this shape, I can then make it more like that symbol I saw here. And the nice thing about this is using the direct selection tool. Notice nothing is selected right now. If it was, I would just click off of everything. But I, I can grab this anchor point, move it out a little bit. So if I want it to look more like this one, I can do that. I can give it a little more effect with this handle, a little more effect with this handle. And we're going to talk about um, tracing things exactly here in just a little bit. See if you can create this shape on your own and then come back and I'll, I'll show you how to do it brings up another little modifier that you need to do. So the key thing here that we're talking about is going from straight to curved shapes. So if I click right here, and then I click right here, I know that I, I get a, a straight line. That's no mystery. But if I click there, click here, and drag to give myself this curve right here, notice that it curves this line. So as you probably learned just previously, you can figure out that if you hold down the Option key, now you get that, that independence. So that works at breaking the handle from another handle. But if there's not a handle, it just gives you one single independent handle. So now if I go over to about here, click and drag again, then I complete out 
my little arch there. But now this handle is going to have an effect on the next one. You don't want to do the option trick here because you actually don't get rid of the handle. You'd end up just bringing it up inside of here and it's just not a good, good way to do it. So actually do it just like you don't care about the second handle. Then release. Now you know if you click over here it's going to have an effect on it. But here's the little trick. You just come right here, click on the anchor, and that one goes away. And come back over here, click, 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 and then drag out your handle. Come over here, kind of line things up, click and drag. Click over here to get rid of that anchor, and then complete the shape. Oh, isn't that cute? Okay, see if you can create this. You pretty much know everything that that you need to create this shape. Um, just one little thing I want to emphasize on it. So here it goes. I'm just going to click down here somewhere in the middle, drag so that I get that little bit of a rounded effect there. Click right here, drag again, go to where the center of the heart is going to be. And I, you know, this one's purpose, purposely off center a little bit. Click right here, drag. Now you're probably realizing that you're going to have to do something with this anchor point. So we hold down the option key, flip it around, kind of mirror image it to the other one. Then I'm just going to go opposite side over here, click and drag. And then I'm going to come back here. Now this is the thing that I wanted to emphasize again is when you're completing this, when there's already an anchor handle here, you don't want to just click and drag because it starts to mess up the, the one that's already there. And this is like one of the, the most extreme examples. So I'm going to Command Z to undo that. And I'm going to click right here, hold down the option. Whoops, I need to hold down the option key as I click. And then I have the independent and I can drag that out now. Maybe you've had this happen to you where you draw an object and you complete it and say okay I'm done with that I'm gonna go draw another one and um, no problem but you have one that's not completed just an open path which sometimes you do and you say okay now I'm gonna go over here I'm gonna draw another one and whoops it connects so what you have to do before you can draw another one is either complete the one that you're working on but if that's not appropriate then you just have to deselect the slow way to deselect is come over here, grab the selection tool, click in the canvas, then go back, grab your pen, and start again. But here's a shortcut you really need to know. Any tool that you have, or most tools that you have, if you just need that selection tool just for a second, hold down the command key, gives you that selection tool, click anywhere on the canvas. As soon as I let my finger off the command key, it, be it becomes the pen key again. So that's a huge time saver. Okay, but what about this instance here where you're drawing something and you have to go answer the door and I don't know, somehow it becomes deselected or you just deselect it on purpose but you want to go back and start drawing on this. So you think, well, all I need to do is you know, probably run my mouse over it and click a point here, but no, it doesn't connect to that. So you have to wake it up and it depends what type of shape it is as to how you wake it up. So if it's just a simple connect the dot type thing, then the way you wake it up is you just come over here and click on the last anchor point and then continue to draw. So that's a pretty easy one to do. Now if it is a curved shape and you want to do that, then it's a little bit different and it depends what was there last but what happens is when I first click on it you see how I get the little minus side next to the pen what it does is it deletes that last anchor that was drawn so now it's just a single anchor item and that's alright if you need a nice sharp transition like that but on the other hand if you were you know gonna continue uh, let's even say you were gonna try to make like a perfect circle or you know a nice oval shape and it was deselected and you come over here and you click on it and that disappears it makes it pretty tough to complete that nice oval shape because you get a real harsh edge there so what you do is you click on it to wake it up and then you drag out and you the anchors stay connected so let me just show you that again in, in the circle example here so I'm starting to, to make a perfect circle doorbell rings becomes